Hi, Cubbies. Welcome to the Appleseed Handbook CD. Are you excited about Cubbies Club this year? I know you'll have lots of fun seeing your friends, playing games, and singing the Cubbies song together. You'll also learn about God and all the important words He has to say to you in His special book, the Bible. Do you remember learning this Bible verse at Club? 1 John 4.10 God loved us and sent His Son. God's Son is the Lord Jesus. A long time ago, God sent Jesus to earth, where people live. Jesus showed His love to everyone, including little children just like you. Now Jesus is living in heaven, but you can talk to Him anytime. Jesus loves you very much. Do you remember the Cubby's motto? Let's say it together. Jesus loves me. Now say it again with me and point to yourself when you say the word me. Ready? Go. Jesus loves me. Great. Now say the motto all by yourself. You got it. Never forget how much Jesus loves you. He will always love you, no matter what. Timothy climbed on his bed. He flipped open his brand new Cubby's Appleseed Handbook. Look, there's an A. Hmm, what starts with A? What was that? Timothy jumped off his bed and ran to the window. Cubby! Cubby Bear stood outside the window, smiling up at Timothy. Cubby, can you help? What starts with A? Oh, let's go look! Timothy dashed down the hall and out the front door. Cuidado, Timothy. Be careful and don't go too far. Cubby and Timothy set off to look for A's. Soon, Cubby pointed and gave a little hop. Oh, uh, look over there! Timothy looked and saw rows and rows of apple trees. Of course, Cubby. Apple starts with A. Oh, I like apples. Cubby and Timothy each ate an apple. They counted to see whose apple had the most seeds, and then they started walking again. Their friend Lovey Lamb greeted them from the petting zoo. Cubby and Timothy stopped to pet Lovey's curly wool coat. Ah. <laughs> Soon a friendly alpaca scooted up next to Lovey for some petting too. I know. A is for alpaca. I, I smell something yummy. Grammy Lois must be baking cupcakes. Let's go. Timothy raced to the sweet apple bakery and pressed their faces to the glass on the door. I see you. Come in. Grammy Lois, may I have a cupcake? And may my friend, Cubby, have one too? Yes, of course. Timothy's girl wiped her hands on her apron. Hey, you're wearing an apron. Apron starts with A. Grammy set out the cupcakes. Timothy and Cubby each grabbed a cupcake and took a bite. I like looking for A's. Mm, me too. Romans 3.23 All have sinned. Timothy opened his apple seed handbook again. This time he saw a C. Timothy knew just what to do. He dashed down the hall and out the front door. Cubby, can you help? What starts with C? Cubby climbed down from his favorite apple tree. Uh, let's look for C's. They set off on their way. Katie Collie ran after Timothy and Cubby. Her job was to keep Timothy out of trouble. Sometimes she also liked to show off. Catch, Katie! Yeah. Timothy threw a disc into the air. Katie raced after it. 
She jumped up high and caught the disc right between her teeth. Good dog, Katie Collie. Timothy patted Katie's head and rubbed her under her chin. Hey, Katie's wearing her collar. Collar starts with C. Cubby and Timothy stopped at the playground to climb on the cruise ship. Timothy steered the big wheel from side to side. He pretended he was on a stormy sea. Timothy, I see three C's in a row on Captain Chip's cruise ship. Captain starts with C, Chip starts with C, and Cruise starts with C. Timothy's dad drove up on his tractor. Timothy, you want to ride in the tractor cab with me? <gasps> Cubby, cab starts with C too. Timothy turned around, but Cubby was hiding behind the slide. Oh, um, I'm scared of tractors. Okay, you wait for me here, Cubby. I don't want to miss a tractor ride. Timothy enjoyed riding around with Dad, but soon he started to miss Cubby Bear. When they stopped at the barn, he hopped off the tractor to find Cubby. Cubby, I just thought of one more thing that starts with C. What's that? Cubby starts with C, and you're my best friend in the whole wide world. Cubby and Timothy hugged, happy to be together again. Romans 5:8. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Timothy opened his sleepy eyes. Time to wake up! It was a brand new day. Timothy hopped out of bed. He put on his play clothes and shoes. Then he grabbed a small jar off the shelf. He couldn't wait to show Cubby what was inside. Timothy dashed down the hallway and out the front door. Wait, Timothy, eat your breakfast first. Timothy gulped down his cereal and darted out to find Cubby Bear. Cubby! Cubby came hopping and jumping the path to meet him. Cubby, look at what I have. Timothy opened his jar and took out five whitish brown seeds. Hmm, what are those? Pumpkin seeds. Mom said I could plant them in our garden. Soon they will grow pumpkins, and and we can have pumpkin pumpkin pie. Oh boy, pumpkin pie! Yum! When can we start? Cubby and Timothy raced to the backyard garden. Mom showed Timothy how to dig five small holes in a mound of dirt. He dropped a seed into each hole. He covered the holes with dirt. Then Timothy sprinkled water over the seeds with his watering can. The sun and rain will help the seeds to grow. Timothy looked up at the clear blue sky. He didn't think it would rain today. Timothy and Cubby played near the garden all day. At night time, Timothy went to bed and turned out his light. He lay in the dark and thought about his seeds. Would they grow tomorrow? Soon he fell asleep and dreamed about pumpkin pies. Genesis 1:1 God created the heaven and the earth. The next day, Timothy and Cubby raced each other to the garden. Would they find three pumpkins? Five pumpkins? Ten pumpkins? Suddenly, they stopped. They stood and stared. They didn't see ten pumpkins, five pumpkins, or three pumpkins. They didn't even see one pumpkin. All they saw was the same mound of dirt from yesterday. What happened? Timothy looked up at the sky. The sun was shining as brightly as ever. Mom said the sun would help my pumpkin seeds to grow. Hmm. 
Maybe the seeds are scared? Scared? Yes, it's very dark under the ground. Well, I would be scared, wouldn't you? Yeah, I guess so. When I'm scared, I hold my favorite toy bunny. Hey, maybe I should bring my bunny outside so the seeds won't feel so scared. Oh, that's a great idea. Timothy found his bunny and set it on top of the mound. They sat and watched. They waited and waited and waited. Soon, they both fell asleep on the grass. Later, when Tim woke up, the bunny was gone. Oh, no! Where's my bunny? Katie Collie sat on the back porch with the bunny in her mouth. Katie! Your bunny looked lost. I brought her home. home. Thanks for trying to help, Katie. We put the bunny there to help our seeds grow. But I guess it didn't work. Katie frowned. Aww. Timothy frowned, too. Cubby, I think we need a new idea. I'll see you tomorrow. Okay, bye. At bedtime, Timothy looked out his window at the twinkly stars and the round, glowing moon. He decided to pray. Dear God, please help my pumpkin seeds to grow. Psalm 33, 9. For he spake, and it was done. He commanded, and it stood fast. The next morning, Timothy walked to the petting zoo with Mom. There were lots of hungry animals to feed. Eleven chicks, ten hens, nine ducks, eight geese, seven rabbits, six sheep, five goats, four calves, three roosters, two alpacas, and one little lamb named Lovey. Timothy fed Lovey first because she was his favorite. Timothy, why do you look so gloomy today? My pumpkin seeds aren't growing. Oh, that's too bad. I wish I could help. At the chicken coop, Hattie Hen asked Timothy the same question Lovey Lamb asked. <laughs> Oh, uh, why do you look so gloomy? Timothy told her about his seeds, and Hattie had an idea. Well, why don't you sit on them? I sat on my eggs every day to help my baby, my baby chicks grow. Huh. I'll try it. Thanks, Hattie. Later that day, Timothy and Cubby sat on the dirt mound. They sat and sat and sat. Uh, this isn't working. Maybe we sing to the seeds. Sing? Yes, why not? So Timothy sang the cubby song, and Cubby hopped and jumped to the beat. We are one of cubbies. We're happy all day long. We know that Jesus loves us. That's why we sing this song. We hop because we're happy. All of a sudden, Timothy and Cubby saw a small pumpkin. The pumpkin bounced along above the bushes. What? Cubby and Timothy looked at each other with big eyes. Then they heard a giggle. <laughs> Lovey! Lovey Lamb jumped out from behind the bushes, wearing a funny-looking hat with a, with a pumpkin on top. <laughs> <laughs> Lovey, you're so silly. Hey, aren't you supposed to be in the petting zoo? Yes, but can I stay out to help with the pumpkins? Pretty please? Uh, okay. Just for a little while. The pumpkins weren't growing, but at least Timothy and his friends were having fun. Genesis 1.31 God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. Genesis 1-1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. That afternoon, Timothy sat by his seeds. 
Would they ever grow, he wondered. Dad drove up in his tractor. Timothy, Timothy, what's wrong? I've tried everything, and my pumpkin seeds still won't grow. Hey, hop up into the tractor cab. Let's go to our favorite apple tree. Dad took Timothy to the oldest tree on the farm, the very first tree Timothy's grandpa planted so long ago. As they sat under the apple tree, Dad said, Timothy, you can't make your pumpkin's pumpkin seeds grow. Why not? Look at all the tiny apples growing on the trees. Where did the apples come from? Do you remember? First we saw the green buds. The green buds turned into pink and white flowers called blossoms. The bees visited the blossoms. The petals on the blossoms dropped off and soon baby apples appeared. By the end of the summer, the apples will be big enough to pick and eat. What about my pumpkins? Your pumpkins will grow when they're ready, just like the apples. You keep watering your seeds, pulling out the weeds, and letting the sunshine on them. God will make them grow. God created the apple trees and the pumpkin seeds. He created you too, too, and he makes you grow. Timothy and Dad went back home. Timothy took care of his seeds and waited. One day, two tiny leaves popped up. Timothy waited again. Long green vines appeared. Timothy waited a few months. Finally, just in time for fall, Timothy had 12 fat orange pumpkins. Grammy Lois baked pies, and Timothy and Cubby ate pumpkin pie until they were full. Timothy, I think pumpkin pie tastes much better when you have to wait for it. Timothy thought so too. John 17, 17, Thy word is truth. One morning, bright and early, Timothy went with Mom to feed the animals in the petting zoo. Ba! Ba! Timothy, why is your smile so big today? Because today, after I'm done feeding the animals, Mom said I could ride on the train. Oh, wow! What fun! After Timothy finished feeding all his animal friends, he and Cubby raced to the train. Hi, Mr. Ted. Mr. Ted liked to give train rides to Timothy and all the children who visited the farm. Can Cubby and I sit up front this time? Of course, of course. Climb right up. All aboard the Orchard Express. The train started to move. Timothy and Cubby smiled at each other. Mr. Ted blew the whistle and rang the bell. One time around the loop, two times around the loop, three times around the loop. Tim and Cubby laughed with glee. This is so fun! Whee! Oh, wow! Yeah! Whee! <laughs> the train stopped and Cubby and Timothy hopped off. Thanks, Mr. Ted. Oh, now I'm hungry. Dad said we could pick apples for a snack. Timothy picked two apples for Cubby and two apples for himself. They sat under the tree and ate their snack. I like living on a farm. Mm, me too. Timothy reached for his second apple, but it was gone. <laughs> they turned around. L lamb sat behind them eating Timothy's apple. <laughs> Silly lamb! You'd better get back to the petting zoo so the kids don't miss seeing you today. Okay, but I just want to say that I like living on a farm too. Bye-bye! <laughs> One day, Cubby and Timothy were wandering around the farm when Cubby noticed a strange sign on a building. What is Apple Kiter? Apple Kiter? Cubby pointed to the sign. Oh, you mean Apple Cider. Dad said the C makes an S sound in the word cider. 
So what's apple cider? Well, it's a drink sort of like apple juice, but you can taste even more apples in it. Cubby thought apple cider sounded quite delicious. Oh, let's go inside. No, Cubby. Dad said I can't go in there. That's where they make the apple cider, and some of the equipment is dangerous. Cubby and Timothy walked to the playground, but Cubby couldn't stop thinking about apple cider. What did it taste like? Was it sweet? Cubby loved apples. He was sure he'd like apple cider even better. Timothy, time for lunch. Wait here, Cubby. I'll be back soon. Cubby slid down the slide. Then he sat on a swing, but he didn't really feel like swinging. So he hopped off the swing and strolled over to the building with the apple cider sign. The door was open just wide enough for Cubby to peek inside the room. It didn't look very dangerous. Cubby tiptoed inside. Psalm 51.4 Against thee have I sinned, and done this evil in thy sight. Cubby tiptoed into the apple cider room and glanced around. In the corner, he saw something that looked like a merry-go-round for bottles. And would you believe it? There was an open spot just for him. Cubby hopped on and started to spin. A, a fountain of brown juice sprayed down his head. Could this be apple cider? Cubby tilted his head backwards and opened his mouth to let the juice pour in. Yum, yum, a hundred times yum. It was sweeter than 10 apples put together. Cubby could hardly drink it fast enough. Uh-oh. A man wearing gloves was about to push a big bottle into Cubby's spot. Time to go! Cubby snuck over to the large metal tank. He pulled himself up and peered over the side. The tank was filled with apple cider, but Cubby couldn't reach the cider to get a good drink. Cubby thought and thought. Suddenly, he had an idea. He moved a stool close to the tank and climbed on the stool. He bent over the side of the tank and dipped his mouth into the cider. Now he could drink. He lapped and licked and slurped and sipped that tasty cider right up. He was enjoying it so much that he let himself slide in a little deeper until, whoops, he tumbled right over the side and kersplat. Oh, 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 oh. He splashed into the tank of ice-cold apple cider. Some bears can swim, but Cubby was not one of those bears. So he flung and flapped his paws in every direction. Oh, help! Oh, wait, wait, help me! John 3.36 He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. After lunch, Timothy ran to the playground. Cubby! Cubby! Timothy looked on the swings and under the slide. He even looked in Captain Chip's cruise ship. No cubby. Katie Collie tugged on Timothy's pants with her mouth. Cubby's in trouble. Come quick. Timothy and Katie raced to the building with the apple cider sign. Timothy pushed open the door. <laughs> Wait, you shouldn't go in there without your dad. Timothy kept going. He climbed on the stool and reached into the tank of apple cider. Yeah, grab my hand! Cubby clung to Timothy's hand with both paws. 
Timothy pulled Cubby up and out of the tank and set him safely on the floor. Cubby stood there, shivering and dripping a puddle of apple cider on the floor. Cubby, what are you doing in here? Timothy, what are you doing in here? Dad, uh, I'm helping my friend, Cubby Bear. Timothy, I told you not to go in this room, ever. But Cubby fell into the tank of cider and... It's good to help your friends, but you still broke the rule. This room is too dangerous for little boys and little bears. I'm sorry. I should have come to you first. I forgive you. I know you'll remember next time. Come on, let's go into the bakery. Grammy Lois is handing out cups of fresh apple cider to everyone. Timothy followed Dad into the bakery, but Cubby stayed behind. He thought he already had quite enough apple cider for one day. John 17, 17. Thy word is truth. Timothy, you're a big boy now. I have a job for you. Timothy liked to be called a big boy. He followed Dad to the woodshed. Winter is coming soon, and I've been chopping lots of wood. I need you to carry some wood up to the house in your wagon. We'll use the wood in our fireplace. Timothy helped Dad stack several small logs into the wagon. Hello? Yes. Okay. I'll be right there. Timothy, I have to go fix one of the tractors. Please pull your wagon up to the house and put the wood in the wood box on the porch. As Dad turned to leave, he looked up at the sky. I think it'll rain today. So promise me you'll do it before it rains. We don't want wet firewood. I promise. I'll do it. Timothy pulled the little red wagon towards the house. It was hard to pull, but not too hard for Timothy. He was a big boy now. Timothy, the alpacas and I are playing a game of tag. Want to play? Sure, I'll play. Timothy liked tag. He dropped the handle of the wagon and darted over to climb the fence. While he was climbing, Lovey tagged his leg. You're it! <laughs> she leapt into the air playfully and galloped away. Lamentations 3.23 Great is thy faithfulness. After a fun game of tag with Lovey Lamb and the alpacas, Timothy walked back to his little red wagon. He gripped the handle and gave a big tug. He took one step, two steps, three steps. Timothy, let's play! Not right now, Cubby. I promised Dad that I would pull this wagon of firewood up to the house. Cubby made his pouty bear face and walked away sadly. Oh. Timothy started pulling again. Four steps, five steps, then Cubby was back. Timothy, I saw some beetles over by a mud puddle. Do you want to see them? Timothy did like beetles and mud puddles. Okay. He dropped the handle of the wagon and followed Cubby Bear to the spot. Timothy and Cubby watched the beetles crawling. Let's build a bridge over the puddle so the beetles can get across. Oh, good idea! They hunted for sticks to build their bridge. Psalm 4-8 I will both lay me down in peace and sleep, for thou, Lord, only makest me dwell in safety. Timothy and Cubby finished building a bridge for the beetles. Then they walked back to the house for a snack. Oh, my wagon! I almost forgot! Cubby, will you help me bring it to the house? I promised Dad I would do it before it rains. Sure. Timothy tugged, and Cubby pushed the wagon from behind. One step, two steps, three steps, 
an orange ball flew into the yard. Katie Collie whizzed by and caught the ball in her mouth. Then she whizzed away. Look! Cubby pointed to Katie. Katie was returning the ball to some kids who were playing catch on the farm. Oh, I, I want to play too! Cubby let go of the wagon and ran to join the game. Timothy dragged the wagon a few more steps. Now he felt left out. Everyone else was having fun, ex- except for him. Timothy dropped the wagon handle and raced off to join the game. A girl with braids threw the ball to Cubby. Cubby grabbed it and threw the ball to Timothy. Timothy caught it and hurled the ball to Katie Collie. Katie spun up high into the air and caught it right between her teeth. Good job, Katie. Take a bow. Katie took a bow. Suddenly, the sky flashed with light. Timothy, come inside. The other kids scattered to find their parents. Giant raindrops fell as Timothy, Cubby, and Katie hurried home. Timothy ducked inside the door, happy to be safe from the storm. He forgot all about the wagon. Genesis 9.13 I do set my bow in the cloud, and it shall be for a token of a covenant between me and the earth. Timothy sat at the window with Cubby to watch the rain. Wait, what was that red dot in the middle of the yard? Oh no, the wagon! Timothy had promised to bring it to the house before it rained, but he had forgotten. Timothy ran to the front door. Maybe he could still go outside and bring it in. Too late. The door opened and Dad walked in. Hi, Timothy. Dad took off his raincoat and boots. Water dripped on the floor. Dad! The wagon! The wood! Dad put his hand hand on Timothy's shoulder. We'll talk about it later. After a while, the rain stopped. Cubby and Timothy saw the sun peeking out from the clouds. They saw something else, too. Dad, come look! Timothy pointed to a band of bright colors in the sky. Red, orange, yellow, green, and purple. Why, that's a rainbow! Rainbows remind me of God's promise. God promised he would never again send a flood to cover the whole earth. And God has kept that promise. God always keeps his promises. Dad, is there a way I can still keep my promise? No, Timothy. Once you break a promise, you can't keep it again. Because you broke your promise, you are not allowed to play with your friends outside tomorrow. However, you can make a new promise. I I can? Yes. You can promise that tomorrow you'll help me take another wagon of wood to the house. We'll put the wood from your first wagon on the porch to dry. Okay. I promise. And this time, Timothy kept his promise. Lamentations 3.23 Great is thy faithfulness. Timothy couldn't wait for winter to be over. Mom, is it warm enough for me to play outside yet? Paciencia, Timothy. Have patience. Wait a few more weeks. Timothy waited a few more weeks. The snow melted. The sun peeked out from the clouds, and all the trees and flowers came alive again. Now is it warm enough? Almost. We're having a chilly spring this year. Timothy pushed his toy tractors around his room again and again. He was tired of pushing tractors. He wanted to run around the farm. Finally, the days got warmer. Timothy dashed out the door to find Cubby Bear, who had just woken up from a long winter nap. Let's play hide-and-seek in the apple trees. The two friends hopped and jumped along the path. They were happy to be together again. Cubby hid first, and and Timothy counted to ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
nine, ten. Ready or not, here I come. Timothy walked between the rows of apple trees. He spotted a blue vest with some green leaves. I found you. Timothy tagged a patch of Cubby's brown fur. Cubby popped out from the trees and smiled. Hey, you're not all I found. He pointed to Cubby's head. On top of Cubby's head was a small, shiny green beetle with reddish brown wings. Cubby pointed back at Timothy. Two beetles were slowly crawling up Timothy's neck. Whoa! Timothy brushed the tickling beetles off with his hand, and they flew away. That's three beetles. Let's see how many more we can find. Cubby and Timothy searched the leaves. One beetle, two, two beetles, three beetles. They counted up to twelve beetles on the leaves, and there were still more. Let's tell Dad about all our beetle friends. They ran off to the barn. Psalm 147.5 Great is our Lord, and of great power. Timothy and Cubby ran into the barn. Dad, guess what? Cubby and I were playing in the apple orchard, and we saw 12 beetles on the leaves. We saw even more than 12, but I forgot what number comes after 12. 13. What did the beetles look like? They were shiny green and sort of red. Uh-oh. Timothy, those are not friendly beetles. They eat the leaves and apples on our trees. Let's ride in the tractor and take a look. Timothy turned to find Cubby, but Cubby was hiding behind a bale of hay. Uh, I'm, I'm scared of tractors. You stay here, Cubby. We'll be right back. Dad drove the tractor to the spot where Cubby and Timothy had been playing. Dad reached his arm out the window and held up a branch. Look at this! Timothy saw leaves covered with holes. The beetles had chewed right through them. Dad shook, shook his head sadly. I didn't expect the beetles to come so early this year. If we don't stop them quickly, they'll hurt a lot of our trees. What do we do? First, let's pray. We'll do what we can, but God is much stronger than we are. We can ask for His help. Then, we go on a beetle hunt. A beetle hunt? That sounds fun! Psalm 124.8 Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. While Dad worked on the big beetle traps, Cubby and Timothy set off to catch a few beetles on their own. Ma! Where are you going? We're going on a beetle hunt. Oh, that sounds fun! Cubby and Timothy hiked into the apple orchard, and Katie Collie followed along to help. There's one! Timothy pointed to a leaf. He picked up the beetle between his fingers, dropped it into his jar, and closed the lid. Katie Collie pointed her nose at a beetle on the ground and tra trapped it under her paw. Good dog, Katie. Timothy opened the lid of the jar to drop Katie's beetle inside. But when he did, his first beetle flew away. Oh, I caught one! Cubby had caught a beetle in his net. He carried his net to the jar. Timothy opened the lid. But as he did, Katie's beetle flew away. Uh, so far we have caught a total of one beetle. This is not going very well. What are those? Cubby pointed to a line of shapes in the dirt. They look like footprints, but they have a strange shape. Cubby peered through his mind glass. Yes, they look round, sort of like a beetle's body. Hmm. Hey, if we follow them, maybe we'll find the biggest beetle of all. <laughs> Katie led the way, with Cubby and Timothy right behind her. Suddenly, a white woolly animal leaped out at them and knocked them all over with a big hug. They landed in a heap of giggles. <laughs> <laughs> Fluffy lamb! 
Were those your hoof prints in the dirt? <laughs> yes. Can I join the hunt too? Sure. Just ask for a little while. Timothy and his friends weren't catching many beetles, but at least they were having fun. Exodus 15:2. The Lord is my strength and song, and He is become my salvation. Later that day, Timothy went with Dad to set the big beetle traps. Here's how it works: the trap makes a smell that the beetles absolutely love. We set the trap far away from the apple trees so the beetles will fly to the trap. When they come. They bump against against the yellow top and fall down into the bag below. Whoa! I think that'll work much better than my jar. The next morning, Timothy and Dad checked the traps. They counted over a hundred beetles. We're doing well, aren't we, Dad? Dad shook his head sadly. Oh, we're trying, but there are still too many beetles eating the leaves on our apple trees. I don't know what else to do. A few days later, Timothy and Dad checked the traps again. There weren't as many beetles this time. That's strange. Let's check the trees. Timothy and Dad rode the tractor to the apple trees and hopped out. They studied the leaves, but they didn't see too many beetles there either. Timothy and his dad looked up. They saw a flock of black birds with yellow beaks nesting in the oak trees near the barn. Hey, those are starlings. Sometimes they're pesky, but other times they help. The starlings like to eat beetles for lunch. They also feed them to their babies. Ew! Timothy imagined what a beetle might taste like. Hmm. I wonder if the starlings help get rid of the beetles for us. Maybe the starlings are the stars of the day. <laughs> Go starlings! <laughs> hey, let's pray and thank God. He he created the starlings. He created you and me and all our apple trees. He's strong enough to take care of us and all of His creation. What a mighty God! Psalm one forty seven five. Great is our Lord and of great power. Timothy set his golden toy crown on his head and smiled. Today was his birthday, and that meant he would get to do all the things he liked best. He couldn't wait for his friends to arrive for the party. A red minivan pulled into the parking lot at the farm. The van door slid open, and Mia hopped out. Hi, Timothy. Hi, Cubby. I hardly ever get to play on a farm. This will be fun. A blue truck pulled up, and Will climbed out. Hi, Timothy. Hi, Cubby. Are we gonna ride the train today? Yep. We'll do lots of fun things. First, I want to play on Captain Chip's cruise ship. Come on, everybody. Yes. Mia, Will, and Cubby followed Timothy to the playground. Lovey Lamb joined them, leaping with glee. <laughs> Timothy had said she could stay out of the petting zoo for the party. Timothy climbed onto the ship and grabbed the wheel. I'll be the captain. Cubby can be my first mate, and everyone else can be my crew. Is that a playhouse over there? I love playhouses. I'll be the mom, and Lovey can be my little lamb. Wait, this is my birthday, and I'm supposed to be in charge. I want us to plan the ship. <clears throat> Just because it's your birthday doesn't mean we have to do everything you say. Come on, Lovey. Mia and Lovey played house while Timothy, Cubby, and Will pretended to sail along at sea. Timothy started to wonder if his birthday would go so well after all. Psalm forty-seven, seven: For God is the King of all the earth. Sing ye praises with understanding. Come on, everyone. Let's go to the petting zoo. I want you to meet my animal friends. Can I stay here at the playhouse, Timothy? I'm always at the petting zoo. Okay, Lovey. You stay. Everyone else, 
follow me. Cubby, Will, and Mia marched behind Timothy to the petting zoo. Timothy opened the gate to let his friends inside. Ew, it smells in here. Why is that goose looking at me? Mia ducked behind Will to try to get away from the goose. That's Gary Goose. He's just being friendly. Give him some food and he'll be your friend forever. Gary flapped his wings and scuttled closer to Mia. Mia took a big step away from him and tried to hide behind Cubby Bear. Timothy started to introduce the animals. This is Hattie Hen and her chicks. Over there in the grass is Alfie Alpaca. That sheep is Lovey Lamb's family and... Help! Timothy! That goose just nipped my leg! That means Gary likes you. Why don't you give him a little food? Am I going to get sick? My mom told me not to touch the animals. Animals have icky germs. Don't worry, Mia. You'll be okay. <gasps> is that the train? Can we take a ride? Before Timothy could answer, Will and Mia raced off to the train track. Timothy felt sad. It was his birthday party, but his friends didn't like doing the things he wanted them to do. Mark 12:30 Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind and with all thy strength. All aboard the Orchard Express. Timothy and his friends lined up to ride the train. Let's all sit in the first car. That's my favorite place to sit. No, I like the caboose best. We can look out the back window and wave at everyone. I like the caboose too. Me too. Will, Mia, and Lovey sprinted to the caboose, while Cubby and Timothy climbed into the first car. <sighs> at least you're still with me, Cubby Bear. The train chugged around the loop a few times. Then the train stopped and everyone got off. Down the road, a loud motor rumbled. I know that sound. That's Dad on his tractor. Come on, I'll ask him to pull us on a hayride. Hey, where's Cubby going? Cubby scrambled towards the trees as fast as his furry legs would carry him. Let's go with Cubby. I'm sure he's going somewhere fun. Mia, Will, and Lovey ran after Cubby. Katie Collie followed along to keep an eye on them. Hey, Timothy, hey, where are all your friends? They don't want to do anything I want to do. This is the worst birthday ever. Hey, why don't you go visit Grammy Lois in the bakery? I think she's almost done with your birthday cake. Cubby stopped running and turned around. <gasps> cake! Cubby forgot about being scared of tractors and set off for the bakery. Timothy and his friends ran right behind him. Psalm 56, 11. In God have I put my trust. I will not be afraid what man can do unto me. The friends raced into the bakery. Why, hello, Timothy. Are you having a good birthday? <sighs> None of my friends want to do what I want to do. I see. Let me tell you a story. While Grammy talked, she added cups of white flour to a bowl. When Timothy's grandpa was still alive, I used to make him all my favorite apple desserts. He ate them, but I could tell he didn't like them as much as I did. One day, I finally asked him what his favorite dessert was. And do you know what he said? Oh, dear. Did I just put in three or four cups of flour? Grammy always became quite forgetful when she was telling a story. Oh, no. I'll have to start over. Grammy poured the flour out of her and added three new cups of flour. Then she continued her story. 
Grandpa said he liked cherry pie the best. Now, I don't like cherry pie very much, but do you know what I did? Oh, dear. Did I just put in two or three teaspoons of bake baking powder? I can't remember. Grammy dumped out her bowl and started over. She continued the story. I started making two kinds of dessert. Cherry pie for Grandpa and caramel apple cookies for me. It worked much better that way. Does this mean you made me two kinds of cake? No. It means you should ask your friends what they like to do. God's in charge of all of us. And in his word, he tells us to do to others whatever we want them to do to us. You treat others how you want to be treated. Hmm, I'll try it. Everyone, what would you all like to do right now? Could we help you eat your birthday cake? Timothy, what would you like to do? <laughs> I think I'd like to eat my birthday cake too. Will you all, will you all help me? Yes! Yeah! The friends would still have to work on getting along, but at least for now, everyone agreed. Psalm 47, 7 For God is the King of all the earth. Sing ye praises with understanding. Timothy tied the last piece of string on his little boat. He had made it from sticks and string and a scrap of cloth. Cubby, come look! Cubby slid down from his favorite apple tree and ran to the woodshed. Do you like it? It's the best boat ever! Let's go to the water and see if it floats. Timothy and Cubby set off down the path to Cubby Bear Creek, which Timothy had named, of course, after his best friend, Cubby Bear. Where are you going? We're going to the creek to see if my boat floats. The creek is too far from the house. Didn't your dad say not to go down there without him? Yes, but we'll only be there a minute. You wait here, Katie. I'll teach you some new dog tricks when I get back. Cubby and Timothy started down the path again, hopping and jumping, because it was a hopping and jumping sort of day. They sang a little song as they went. Here we go down to Cubby Bear Creek, Cubby Bear Creek, Cubby Bear Creek. Here we go down to Cubby Bear Creek, to see if our boat will float. Katie trailed softly behind to keep an eye on them. John 1, 29. Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Timothy knelt by the creek and set his little boat in the water. Hey, it floats! Timothy looked at Cubby, but Cubby was running to another boat. It was a much bigger boat. Cubby, that's Dad's fishing boat. Dad rests it there on the shore when he, when he takes a break. Wow! Can we play in it? Cubby climbed into the boat and sat near the front. If you catch me, you can be the captain! Timothy ran over to the boat and tried to tag Cubby. But Cubby smiled and slid to the back of the boat. Timothy laughed and reached for Cubby, but Cubby scooted to the front again. They played this game until Timothy finally made a giant leap for Cubby. Timothy tumbled into the boat, and the boat pushed out into the water. Uh oh Timothy and Cubby looked at each other with big eyes. Instead of floating a toy on Cubby Bear Creek, they were now floating in a real boat on Cubby Bear Creek. What should we do? Hmm. Maybe we should enjoy the ride for a while. Cubby pointed to a fish swimming close to the boat. There's a fish over there, too. Suddenly, a fish flipped out of the water. That's three fish. Let's see how many we can count. Four fish? Five fish? Cubby leaned out of the boat and tried to catch a fish between his paws. That's not the way I catch a fish. I use a pole, like this. 
Timothy picked up Dad's fishing pole. Then he remembered he didn't know how to work it. Um, I don't think we'll be catching fish today, but let's keep enjoying the ride. Mark 1, 17. And Jesus said unto them, Come ye after me, and I will make you to become fishers of men. Mark 4, 41. Timothy and Cubby what liked riding in the boat. Is this? They liked it yet so much the that they didn't the notice how baby? far they had floated from the shore. Timothy and Cubby were still stuck in the boat out in the middle of a Cubby air gust Mark of wind blew then Timothy's cap right off. Man man he man he spotted dark yet clouds the in the sky. In sea, obey Katie, Collie, and Dad stood on the shore. The storm is coming. We better Katie go held back. Timothy's cap in her mouth. Mark 4, 41. Dad wore his raincoat and tall rubber boots. What manner of man is this? Even the wind and the sea obey him? Dad stopped. He jumped through the water. He grabbed Cubby one end of the boat head and pulled it to shore. Mark 4, 41. Uh, I'm not what a good manner swimmer. of a man is this? Remember what happened with the, the apple cider? Soon, Timothy oh, yeah. and Cubby were in the back seat of Dad's really truck. Laugh? Wrapped Maybe in a someone will hear us and come to help. Katie Collie rode up front. At the count of three, what of Timothy and Cubby yelled as loud as they could. Cubby and I were playing in the boat. We slid into the water. Mark 441. But no one came. Timothy, what man no better than this? The boat floated this. quickly down the, the creek. The yeah, the Timothy sea, closed baby. his eyes I just wanted to see if my boat would float. His boat? I know. Oh, Maybe someone had found my candle water. And guess that we're in trouble. What do you have a friend like Katie Collie, Timothy? That idea made them feel a little better. She barked tell me that you were in danger. She a raindrop plopped on Timothy's head. Really? Mark 441. Cubby scooted close to Timothy as they held each other tightly in his head. They were wet, he smiled, and some tail on the seat. Would they ever make it home? By the way, Timothy, you'll be playing Mark inside for a while until you can follow what the rules. What manner of man yeah, is this? I know. That even the wind and the sea obey him? The next day, Timothy and Dad set un set under the old apple tree. Mark 441. I was really scared what manner of there, Dad. man is this? Timothy and Cubby liked riding the in the boat. The yeah, so they liked it so friends, much that they didn't remember, notice how far the they had Jesus floated from you, the shore. Even when your friends aren't. Mark 441. A savior. big what gust of wind blew Timothy's this? cap right off. Even the wind you don't have to see He spotted him? dark clouds in the sky. Timothy leaned against Dad. He was thankful to be safe. He was what thankful for his family and his friends. But even the Maybe wind and the sea obey him? He I'm was thankful for his Savior, and the, water the Lord Jesus Jerry. Christ. Mark Cubby shook his head and shuddered. What manner oh, of man is this? I'm not a good even swimmer. the wind and the sea Remember obey him? Remember what happened with the apple cider? Oh, yeah. What if we yell really loud? Mark 4, 41. John 1, 20, what manner of man is this? At the count of three, the wind Timothy and Cubby yelled as loud the as world. they could. Mark 441. What scared. manner of man but is no this? One came. That even the wind the and the sea obey him? The boat floated quickly down the creek. Timothy closed his eyes and thought as hard as he could. Mark 441. I know. Maybe someone what will find my cat and guess this? that we're trouble. That even the wind that and idea the sea made them obey him? Psalm 118, 29. But not for long. Oh, Raindrop plucked on Timothy's the Lord, head. Mark 441. Good. What Cubby scooted close to Timothy as they that hugged even each other tightly. The sea obey him? They were wet, Luke cold, and scared. 11. Would they For ever make it home? For unto you is born Mark this day 41. a Savior, what which is Christ is the this, Lord. That even the wind and the sea obey him? First Mark Corinthians 4, 15, 4. What manner of he man rose is again this, the that third even day. the wind and the Timothy sea obey him? Timothy and Cubby him? liked riding in the, in the boat. It so much that they didn't notice how Acts far they had fallen from the shore. 41. But ye what shall receive power. Man is this? A big After gust that, of wind the blew the to the sea of right off. You, and ye he shall be dark witnesses cloud in the sky. unto me. Whoa. Mark 4:41. The storm is coming. What 